Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Before we get down to the most recent discoveries in Antarctica, I would like to cover something that I had spoken about a couple of videos ago. It has to do with this passage between the tip of South America and the Antarctic Peninsula, I had made the allegation using another map that this gap in between there is not the original Drake Passage, that there was some type of an event that I believe occurred sometime in the 1700s that opened up this huge, huge area, that the original Drake Passage was down here in the tip, and it's very, very tiny little passageway that goes through what we see as the mountains. Now, many have taken issue with that, saying, no, 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 that couldn't possibly be. Um, whatever happened down here happened thousands and thousands of years ago. Well, let me show you a piece of history that we can verify that lends credence to my theory. Now, it has to do with South Georgia and what they call the Sandwich Islands. This big island right here was discovered in the early 1600s, this big one, but over here, this strip of islands here, you don't see anything mentioned in the record about them until the late 1700s, almost 150 years, and you can't, they're not that far apart. There's no way if these islands were truly here at the same time this one was here, that you could make me believe that it took them 140 years to go from here to here. And I just want to show this smallest island. It's called Zavadovsky Island. Now, here is the history of that. Okay. Let me see if I can find the year here. Discovered by, discovered and named by Russian Antarctic explorer, Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen in 1819. Okay, so just so we're clear, this little island wasn't found, discovered, or named until 1819. 
Now, the big island of South Georgia over here, let's pull up that history. The island of South Georgia is said to have been first sighted in 1675. 1675. So that's, what's 125 and 19? 144 years between the two. That just doesn't make any, any sense to travelers in the region. That just wouldn't have been the case. If these islands were truly here at the same time this one was here, someone would have named and or discovered them long before the early 1800s. Especially knowing that, you know, we can confirm this one was sighted and confirmed to be an island in 1675. I'll go ahead and measure the distance here real quick, just so we don't have any confusion. The distance between the two islands is only 500 kilometers, which in miles is about 350 miles. For these explorers, that's nothing. So I don't think they were there in 1675. I think something happened in the early to mid 1700s that opened up this passage. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people that take issue with that, but explain the difference historically. How that could possibly be. That, and all of these islands, I've looked them all up, they are all late 1700s to early 1800s discoveries. Even though this one is 1600s. So, anyway, that's the basis of my theory about how these two locations... Um, with the Piri Reis map not being two different locations at the time of its creation. It was all one location. So, anyway, without any further delay. This was one of the discoveries I wanted to get to yesterday, but I just didn't have time to. It's nearly a perfect cube setting on the ice in Antarctica. It's not uncommon to find structures down here that look square-ish. To find multiple 90-degree angles in any one location really does smack of civilization, but to find an actual three-dimensional cube, I don't know how that could be formed by nature. It's just, I just can't think of a process that would create it this way, especially where it is. And I'll go ahead and measure this, too, just so that we know what we're looking at. And it's not some enormous, enormous cube. It's 22 feet high, which is only about, about 7 meters. And about, let's see, about 10 meters long about 32 feet. So, uh, clearly, uh, you know, a very habitable building. Which is what I think it is. Honestly, it's just a normal, everyday structure that somehow has survived. And here it is. You know, proof, positive. We've shown areas that have revealed the footprints of buildings and roads and structures that you would see in a normal society. Now here's one of them actually existing. One of them actually made it through. And like always, of course, I will give you the year and the location using Google Earth Pro so that you can go find this stuff for yourself. You never have to take my word for it. Google Earth Pro, take the coordinates, type them in, and go look and make up your own mind. Now there is another location here. I'm trying to decide which one I want to go to first. We'll do this one. It's probably the, the oldest of the ones that I wanted to deal with today. It's this strange structure that I called, quote unquote, the keyhole structure, because it basically just looked like an old time keyhole when I found it. You've got this round circular thing, and it looks like some type of a tube or a pipe or a tunnel, and something black is pouring out of it into this, this river here. 
Now, that seems like a strange thing to show, but over here, if it really were oil, and it's as cold as they say it is in this region, on the surface, yeah, it would be total thick glop. It would move a lot like lava. And so that would explain why you would see kind of a, a blunted off end here. Now, the real damning part about this is I want you to notice the distance between the mouth of this opening and the level. Do you see the distance here? Now, this is 117-2013. Pardon me. 228-2012. That was the first time this image appeared. 1-1-2012. The fact that we saw images only seven days apart here shows that they're looking at something. Now, here is 11-8. Pardon me, 11-28-2011. Sorry, I'm screwing the dates up for you guys. But this is November of 2011, late November. Do you see how the level is higher? The opening is still there. And we can still see the same river. It goes around here. And this is actually, it's a very strange structure. You can see it's actually this weird tunnel that goes up, in, around, and behind. What would have created this bridge? I really don't know. Natural formation anyway. But you would have to ask yourself a question. Who would have been so interested in this that they would have bothered to image it this way? See, we're back to the, the January 2012 here. 2011, 2012, February, December 2012. And there's really no new image all the way up to going through 2015. Which kind of leads me to another point about a lot of these discoveries. Some people ask, how is it that we're only now seeing this? Why hasn't anyone uncovered this before? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that when these images were first made, some of them 2004, people don't really remember how long ago that was. There were no commercially available 4K devices or screens of this size. And if these images were be being taken by expensive high-tech satellites and it was being used for the military in conjunction with Google, they probably never really worried at the time so much about people seeing this stuff. But now that we have the ability to go buy 4K screens for ourselves in large sizes and zoom in on this stuff, people still ask, well, why wouldn't have somebody have blown the whistle? Why wouldn't have somebody have said something? Great way to lose your security clearance. The people that were looking at these images, you, you just don't say stuff like that. And even the pilots that have seen all of these flying unidentified craft, same thing guaranteed way to lose all of your military benefits, get kicked out of the military, and screw up your life completely. Or whatever alphabet agency that you were part of is go start talking about civilizations under the ice in Antarctica. So let me go back and just show this again, how this uh, has changed over the years. You see here, it looks like the level of whatever it is, is higher, up closer to this tunnel or drainage pipe or whatever it is. And you can see after time goes by that the level drops, the distance between it drops. And that was what I was trying to go for here. That whatever it is is being drained. And I really do. It might be just oil. And this might be the entire crux of who was responsible for all this high-res imagery in Antarctica. I think, honestly, though, there are things that we have found that they didn't bother looking for because they didn't care. I think it might have just been a lot of it happy accident that we were able to see all of the things that we've seen. Let 
Let me show one other location before we get out of here. Okay, we will do... We'll do this one. Sorry about that. Sometimes it's hard to decide. Sometimes it's just the symmetry of things um, that just stick out like a sore thumb. When you have this giant sheet of white snow, and anybody who's lived you know, out in uh, rural areas with giant farm fields in the wintertime that get covered in these sheets of white snow, any little rise or fall in the uh, topography or anything out of place, you can see from a long way away. So looking here at this particular region, what sticks out to me is the absolute symmetry of the distance between these ridges. The perfection of them. What it speaks to me as is there's something under the ice here that's causing this. And I think it's giant heated tunnels and passageways, to be very truthful. And I think what we're looking at when we see things like this are just areas where it's collapsed the snow above. And if any, anyone's ever put a uh, corrugated pipe out under snow that had some type of hot drainage to it, like if you had a, um, like a washer drain outside in the winter, you'll see the ridges through the snow of the corrugated drainage pipe and that's just kind of a I guess modern American example of what I think we're seeing here on a grand scale and this might be why they were looking at these in high res because you'd have to ask yourself why what was so intriguing about structures like this that they decided to high res image these huge areas when they found things like this more geometric structures that really can't be explained any other way and I guess the uh, the whole point of all of this is that of all of the topics anyone could be talking about on YouTube talking about things like an entire civilization being lost to man over hundreds of years and now being uncovered I think that would top anything this last image I'm showing just looks like the ridge of a building it really looks like there's it's almost like you can see the parapets And I really think it's right here. It's covered with snow on the back side. But look closely right here. Does that not look like a lot of the craft, a lot of the things that we've seen in our skies? Just looking down from above. So, anyway, I will leave it there. Thank you guys so much for your support. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it.
God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tech they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the land a site off-world, sir?